To tell you about what happened today in New York City, I need to take you back to what happened last December in Hawaii. Qualcomm's Snapdragon Summit brought beautiful scenery, excellent company, and most importantly, the debut of a chip that promised to revolutionize laptops by doubling their battery life, keeping them connected 24-7, and making them thinner and lighter than ever. <laughs> right from the jump, I said this would be a perfect fit for Microsoft's Surface laptops, and today, the company finally made it so. Oh, and uh, there's a phone, too. We'll get back to my very brief look at the phone and its convertible counterpart later. First, let's take a look at the updates across the whole Surface line. That's easy to do when it comes to the Surface Pro 7 and Surface Laptop 3. As those suffixes imply, these are just refinements of existing platforms, to the point where at a briefing discussing the laptop, Microsoft spent nearly half the time talking about how finely machined the lid has to be to let you open it easily. I'll admit to a fit and finish fetish, but even I have to say that the bigger improvements here are more practical ones that you can find across today's lineup. Like the Surface Laptop finally getting a USB-C port to go with the USB-A and the Surface connector and the fact that that Surface connector now supports quick charging from dead to 80% in an hour. That's cool, and again, it's across the lineup. You also get a bigger screen option if you want it, up to 15 inches, and in an interesting shift, you can choose between Intel or AMD for your processor. Now, there's other stuff like new microphones and the expected silicon bumps, but for my money, today's PCs don't get any more exciting than that always-on, always-connected Surface the Pro X. Thinner and lighter than any Surface ever, and with more display area too. This machine is crazy just on its face. When you pull down the magnetic type cover, a new mini Surface pen that recharges in its own bay with a flat construction that feels like a carpenter's pencil. It's comfy, and I already love writing with it more than the existing Surface pen. Then take a gander at the exploded view here. I love how Microsoft always does these at their press events. You see this chip? To simplify things way too much, Qualcomm a while back decided to take a phone processor and build it for a laptop. Then it refined it over two generations into that 8CX that was announced alongside fancy drinks in Hawaii. And then Microsoft worked with Qualcomm to make a special version just for the Surface. The upshot? an always connected 4G modem, better battery life, and performance equivalent to or better than a mid-range Surface from last year. But keep in mind that all we've seen today are promises, and even some of those have compromises. Like the estimated usage time on this machine, 13 hours. Yeah, it sounds long at first, but those estimates are always wildly optimistic. Also, it falls short of the usual estimates of 20 hours for ACPCs, and third, the conventional Surface devices announced today, their estimated run times fall between 10 and 11 hours. Microsoft said it was okay with making that sacrifice in order to make the Pro X lighter and thinner and give it a bigger display, and we'll see if I agree once I get it in for review. One thing I can tell you now, I wish Microsoft would have given this a more exciting paint job. The black aluminum picks up smudges immediately, I'm still stoked, I just want this to look as exciting as it really is. <laughs> Moving on to something that needs no help standing out, Surface earbuds are a thing now. And they look like you're hiding Othello pieces in your ear to play a magic trick or something. There's a reason for the large area. It's a capacitive plate calibrated for swipe and tap gestures. And in my few minutes testing them out, I did find that large area easier to manipulate than the tiny touchpads on, say, Samsung's Galaxy Buds. Now, the Microsoft Office integration sounds ridiculous, and features like advancing PowerPoint slides with a swipe are ridiculous. But it also means they're not just Bluetooth earbuds, but language translators and closed captioning devices. Still, I'm not entirely sold. They're pricey, and the fact that they intentionally don't isolate noise makes them great for joggers, maybe, but not for subway rides or flights. I don't know. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you think. The biggest game changer of today is something I was kept six feet away from. 
The Surface Neo and Surface Duo are as confusingly named as the Chevy Volt and Chevy Bolt, but they represent the arrival of two products Microsoft fans have drooled over for years, the Courier Convertible and the Surface Phone. The Convertible is the Neo, which will run the new Windows 10X on dual 9-inch screens joined by a 360-degree hinge. The phone is the Duo, which uses the same form factor but scales back to 5.5-inch screens, and instead of Windows, it runs Android. Now cool your jets, folks, these won't be out until holiday season 2020. The Neo being held for then, I understand, Windows 10X is a totally different platform that's gonna need some time in the oven, but Duo runs Android. And contrary to what we heard Microsoft say today, we have seen devices like this before. A lot of the same ideas from that Axon M, and more recently the LG G8X, are in evidence on the Surface Duo. Now, the Duo certainly has more beautiful hardware than both of those, but by a year from now, well, those bezels won't be aging well. And in what I expect to be a broadening field of foldables by then, I don't think the centerline seam will either. Nevertheless, I'm stoked to sample the first Surface that fits in a pocket. So sound off on social if you want me to review that one. I mean, I'm going to, but let me know I have your support. In the meantime, check out a dual screen laptop you can buy today in my Asus ZenBook Pro Duo review that just went up. And for a much deeper dive on this Surface stuff, be sure to check out Daniel Rubino's hands-on at Windows Central. This video was produced after a press event hosted by Microsoft in New York City and recorded in a hotel room. That's why it sounds a little weird. Obviously, I didn't get any special treatment, and as always, Microsoft was afforded no copy approval and no compensation was exchanged for this coverage. A full disclosure, in the past, Qualcomm has sponsored Mr. Mobile Videos, but there is currently no advertising agreement in place, and Qualcomm did not review or approve this copy prior to publication. Please subscribe if this is the kind of video you'd like to see more of. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.